Hey everyone, so it's been about a year and a half since my last FPS boosting tutorial, so today I'm finally going to be giving you guys my updated 2021 FPS boosting guide. This video is going to be covering everything from in-game settings to Windows optimizations. There's a lot to unpack here, and hopefully by the end of this video you're going to have a significant performance boost throughout your entire game. I'm going to be covering quite a few different topics throughout this video, so there's a good chance that you might have already seen or done something that I'm going to mention, so there's going to be timestamps in the description of this video so you can skip around. This video is also sponsored by Hone. Hone is a Discord community with over 16,000 members that's made to help optimize your PC. They cover a wide variety of topics ranging from FPS improvements to network optimizations, with in-depth tutorials and a friendly community to help ensure that you're getting the most out of your PC. If this sounds interesting to you, then join their Discord with the link in the description. They're giving out early access to their new Hone optimization software if you invite 20 different people to the Discord. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I highly advise that you create a Windows restore point first. Even though this guide is safe, if you happen to mess something up or something just doesn't work for your PC for whatever reason, then you want to have a restore point so that the changes aren't irreversible. To do that, you want to press your Windows key and type in a restore point. Click on create a restore point right here. Once you have this panel opened up at the bottom where it says create a restore point right now, click on create. You can name it anything you want, but once you have that done, click on create and it's going to create a restore point. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again, but I just want to say one more time, I highly advise that you do this and I do not hold any accountability for any problems that you might have with your PC after doing it of this, so please be responsible and create a restore point so that you don't make any irreversible changes to your PC. The first thing that you should have is an FPS boosting client, so I'm using Lunar Client. What this is is essentially a mod pack, but it has a lot of FPS optimizations built into it. Lunar Client vastly outperforms vanilla Minecraft when it comes to your FPS in game. It supports the latest version as well as 1.8, and you can run it on Windows, Mac, and Linux. The download link to Lunar Client is going to be in the description if you don't already have it. If Lunar Client doesn't work for you or for whatever reason you don't like it, then Badline Client is a good alternative. It's another FPS boosting client. It supports uh, pretty much every version of the game going up to the latest snapshot. Both Lunar and Badline Client outperform vanilla Minecraft and even Optifine, but from my experience, Lunar Client seems to be a little bit better than Badline Client when it comes to FPS in game. The next thing is increasing how much dedicated RAM that you have to your game. So I'm going to show you how to do this in both Lunar and Badline Client as well as vanilla Minecraft, but for Lunar Client, you just want to click on settings right here and allocated memory. You basically increase this slider to dedicate more RAM to MC. So when it comes to how much dedicated RAM you have, don't just take the slider and increase it to the very maximum limit, that's not going to help you. When it comes to how much memory you want allocated to MC, you typically don't want over 3GB of RAM dedicated to it. Most of the time, Minecraft doesn't even use above 2GB of RAM when you're actually playing. Going above 3GB isn't really going to help you, all you're going to be doing is just taking away RAM that your computer could be using for other resources. The one exception to this is if you're playing modded Minecraft. Minecraft, so something like Feed the Beast or Tekkit, where there's a heavy mod pack, and with that you want to have more RAM allocated, but for the majority of people, if you're just playing vanilla, if you're playing unmodded single player or multiplayer, just leave it at 3GB. On Bad Lion Klein, it's a very similar process, you just want to go to settings right here, and then there's going to be another slider where you can increase how much RAM that you have. Note that 3072 megabytes is roughly the same as 3GB. And then, if you're using the vanilla Minecraft launcher, you just want to go up top where it says Installations, and whatever version of Minecraft you're using, you want to go to the three dots right here, click on edit, click more options right here, and scroll down to JVM arguments. You can ignore all of this part right here. What you want to look at is the dash XMX 2G. Change the number two to how many gigabytes of RAM you want dedicated to MC, and then click on save. The next thing you want to do is install Optifine. So Optifine is an FPS boosting mod. Now note that both Lunar and Badline Client already have Optifine built into them. This is only really for people who are using the vanilla launcher. So what you want to do is go to optifine.net slash downloads, link in the description. Go into the downloads tab and choose whatever version of Minecraft you want to use it on. Click the download button press skip right here, and then click on download. It doesn't really matter where you save it. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and right click it, hover over open width, and click on Java. And once you have this tab open, go ahead and click on install. When it says Optifine is successfully installed, click on OK. You can exit out of that and go back into the Minecraft launcher, open it up, go to installations up top over here, click on new. You can name it whatever you want, but where it says version, click on the drop down and select Optifine. Make sure while you're here to click on more options and make sure that you have whatever RAM that you want dedicated set to. And once that's done, click on create, go back to play, and then select that version from this drop down right here. And there you go. You can click on play and it's going to launch Optifine. 
fine. Okay, so before we move on, it is imperative that you download this folder right here called Home Discord Tweaks. The link is down in the description, but this is going to provide us with all of the tools that we need moving forward. Okay, so now we're going to move on to your in-game settings. I'll display all the settings that you should have if you want to maximize your FPS in a second, but if you want to skip manually applying all of these settings, then I'm going to show you how you can auto-apply them. To do this, open up the Hone Discord Tweaks folder that I made you download earlier, double-click on it, and look for game-specific tweaks, and open this folder. Open the Optifine folder, and run the Optifine Settings Windows batch file. Once you see this prompt, it's basically asking what version of Minecraft you want to apply these settings to, so it says press 1 to tweak Optifine settings for 1.7.10, press 2 for 1.8.9, and press 3 for 1.16, so I'm personally going to do this on 1.8.9, so I'm going to enter 2 on my keyboard, and press enter, and once you see the success tab right here, then you're good. You can click OK and restart your game. If you don't want to do that, then that's fine, you can just copy my settings right here. In the other tab here you can change your resolution, so you can lower it from 1920 by 1080 to something lower. You can try 1280 by 720 or 1600 by 900. Both of these are alternative resolutions that might help your FPS. So with that being said, after changing all of those settings, your game is going to look pretty terrible, but that's sort of the sacrifice you have to pay if you're trying to maximize your FPS, so pick your poison. If you don't want your game to look absolutely terrible, then skip this step and move on to the other steps. Also while I'm here, if you guys enjoy my content and use Lunar Client, then I would appreciate it if you considered checking out my Lunar Client cape and my bandana in the store. Every purchase of my cosmetics does help support me as a creator. The next thing we're going to do is import a custom power plan into your PC. So you want to go back into the Hone Discord Tweaks folder, and then go into the Hone Power Plan folder, and then run the Import Hone Windows command script. Once you see the Success tab, you can click OK. Next, you want to press your Windows key and type in Edit Power and you should find Edit Power Plan right here. Go ahead and click on that. And make sure it displays the Hone Ultimate Power Plan at the top right here. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your GPU drivers are all up to date. So this is going to depend on what graphics card that you have. For me, I have an NVIDIA GPU, so to do this I'm going to be using GeForce Experience. I'm not too sure how to do this if you have an AMD or Intel GPU, so I'd recommend looking that up. If you do have a GPU that isn't an NVIDIA GPU, but if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you want to make sure you have GeForce Experience downloaded. Click on the Drivers tab right here and make sure to download the latest driver. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is enable KBoost, and basically what KBoost is is a feature for NVIDIA graphics cards that lets your GPU clock speeds and voltage run at the highest frequency all the time. So there's two things that you need to know about this. The first thing is that this only works for NVIDIA GPUs, so make sure you have an NVIDIA GPU first. A really easy way to check is to just go to your desktop and right click, and if you have this option right here, NVIDIA Control Panel, it means you have an NVIDIA GPU. And the second thing is that because KBoost essentially makes your GPU run at max power 24-7, that is going to make your graphics card draw more power and run hotter, so if temperatures are something that you're worried about, then this might not be something you want to do. Anyways, to do this, you want to go back into the Home Discord Tweaks folder and go into the NVIDIA Settings folder, open that up, go to MSI Afterburner, and then double click on the Import Skin batch file. Running this batch file is going to go ahead and install MSI Afterburner. Going through the installation, uh, select your language, click on Next, set the terms, click on Next again. You don't need to install the Reva Tuner statistics server, so I uncheck that and I click on next. And then for your destination folder, make sure that you leave this default, don't change it and then click on next, and then finally click on install. Once it's done, make sure that run MSI afterburner is checked and click on finish, and then it will open it right up. And then if you get the success tab that says your skin has been imported, then you are doing things right. So once you're here, first of all, click on the settings icon right here, and then go to user interface and where it says user interface skinning properties, select the drop down and change it to default click apply and click OK. And then finally, click on the K icon right here at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. And then it's going to ask you if you want to reboot, you want to click on yes, but that's going to enable K boost. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is set up MSI mode. And basically what MSI mode does is it helps reduce your input lag as well as just optimizing your graphics card. So to do this, you want to go back into the home discord tweaks folder and then go into the MSI mode folder and then run the MSI mode tool. Once you have this open, this might look a little bit 
different for you depending on what graphics card that you have, but the first thing that you want to do is go into your GPU, so for me I have an RTX 3070, go under the interrupt priority tab and click on the drop down and select this to high. And you want to do the same thing with your network card, so for me it says Intel Ethernet connection right here, this is my network card. Go ahead and go into the drop down once again and select high. And then finally, you want to go into the list column and go ahead and remove all of these numbers. So once you have this all done, go ahead and click apply and you're done. The next thing we're going to do is debloat Windows and remove a lot of the unnecessary services that run in your PC's background. To do this, go back into the Home Discord Tweaks folder and then go down to the debloat Windows folder. And then all you need to do is right click this anti tracking batch file and run it as an administrator. And that's it. The next thing we're gonna do is install the timer resolution service, and basically what this does is it helps decrease input lag and decides how fast your processor updates and refreshes. To install this, you wanna go back into the Home Discord Tweaks folder, and then go into the timer resolution service folder, and then right click the timer resolution service windows command script and run it as an administrator. You'll then get a Microsoft Visual Studio setup, so go ahead and click on next and let it do its thing. When it says the installation is complete, you can click on finish, and if you see the success tab, then you're done, and you can click on OK. The next thing we're going to do is set up GPU affinity, so quick disclaimer, this is pretty advanced, so if you are going to do this, then make sure you follow this video very thoroughly and listen to everything that I say. If you feel uncomfortable doing this, then you can go ahead and skip this step, but essentially what we're going to be doing is setting up affinities for your display adapter, and this is going to help prevent stuff like mouse and keyboard stutters and network related stutters. The first thing that you should do is check what processor you have, because it's advised against doing this if you don't have at least four processing cores. So to do this, press your Windows key and type in this PC. Go ahead and right click this PC and click on properties. I have an i9-9900K and I know that that has 8 processing cores so I'm good personally for this. If you don't know how many cores your processor has, you should google your processor and check how many cores it has before continuing. Once you're done with that, hold your windows key and press R on your keyboard to bring up the run prompt. Type in devmgmt.msc and click on enter. This is going to bring up your device manager and the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and go to the display adapters tab and click the drop down. Double click your graphics card and you want to take note of the location. You want to keep this in mind because we're going to use it for later. Next, go back into the home discord tweaks folder and go into the infinity folder and you want to run int policy underscore x64 as an administrator. It might give you an error, but go ahead and ignore this and click on OK. When you have this tab open up, you want to scroll down until you find your graphics card. So I found my graphics card, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070, and you want to make sure that the location info is the same as the device manager info that you pulled up. So right here it says PCI bus 1 device 0 function 0 and you want to make sure that it says the same thing over here, and it looks like it does. It says bus 1 device 0 function 0, so we're good. Okay, the next step is pretty important, so listen to me carefully. You're going to need to know a lot of info about your CPU before proceeding. If your CPU has 4 cores and it doesn't have hyperthreading, then click on Set Mask and check CPU 1. If your CPU has 4 cores and it does have hyperthreading, then click on Set Mask and check CPU 2 and 3. If your CPU has more than 4 cores and it doesn't matter if it has hyperthreading or not, you want to click on Advanced and check IRQ Policy All Processors in Machine and click on OK. So what you change is dependent on your CPU. Once again, I highly advise that you research your CPU and look up if you have hyperthreading or not on your CPU. And make sure that you've listened to my instructions and you have done this correctly. And if you have any questions, then you can make a ticket about it in the home Discord server. You might get an error when you apply these settings, but that is completely normal and your changes are still going to take effect. And you might want to restart your PC for these changes to take effect. Okay, so moving on to some general performance optimizations that you can do to help speed up your PC. The first one that I like to do is clear out your temp folder. So to do this, you want to hold your Windows key and press R on your keyboard, and then type in percent temp percent and click on enter. So all of these files are all temporary files, you don't need them, they're just taking space on your PC for no reason. So go ahead and hold control and press A on your keyboard to select all the files, right click and click on delete. If you get a prompt like this that says the action can't be completed because the file is open, then you want to click on this check mark right here that says do this for all current items, and then click on skip. And after that, for the most part, your temp folder should be clear. The next software I like to use is CCleaner, so this software is free, I'm going to leave it in the description. What I like to do with it is go into the registry tab right here, make sure that all of these are checked, and then click on scan for issues. Once it's done scanning, go ahead and click on review selected issues. It's going to ask you if you want to back up the registry before making changes. You can do this, I don't think it's necessary, so I click on no, and then click fix all selected issues. 
and you're done, and you can close out of that. You can also use CCleaner to clean a lot of temporary files, so in the custom clean option, you can customize what you want it to remove in these tabs right here, but once you have everything set and done, you can click on run cleaner, and then click continue, and it's going to go ahead and remove a bunch of temporary files. And you can see actually for me that quite a bit was removed. It's been actually a while since I've used this program. The next thing I wanted to cover is overclocking. Now this video is not going to be a tutorial on how to overclock. What overclocking is, is essentially boosting the speeds of your CPU and GPU above than what it is stock. Overclocking is something that is a little bit tedious because for one, not everyone can overclock. If you want to overclock your CPU, first of all, you need to know what your CPU is, and also if your motherboard is compatible with overclocking. And after you find that out and you start overclocking, overclocking isn't the same for everyone, which means that you can't just input the same numbers that someone else did on the internet. You have to find out what voltages and frequencies work for you with trial and error. But anyways, if you're interested in this, I'd highly recommend looking up a tutorial on how to overclock either your CPU or GPU on YouTube. Most of these tutorials are quite good. If you can overclock, then I'd 100% do it because it's literally free performance. And it's going to have a really big impact on your FPS if you can do it. Some people don't like overclocking because they think it isn't safe or that it's going to ruin your PC. That's not true. Trust me, overclocking is 100% safe. If you know how to do it right and you follow a trustworthy tutorial, then I guarantee you that overclocking is 100% worth it. I'll try to find a good overclocking video and put it down in the description for you guys to watch if you're interested. Anyways, everyone, that is pretty much it for this video, so I want to say thank you so much for watching. I know there wasn't really a lot of gameplay in this video, but if you want to see more gameplay, then I would highly recommend checking out my Twitch in the description. I've been streaming extremely frequently on Twitch, and it's been really fun, so if you guys want to hop into my streams, then you are always welcome there. But anyways, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.